Welcome back to part 5 of this module on error handling. In this part, we'll cover unit testing. There are many different types of software testing used to measure the quality of software. Most testing involves functional testing, testing whether or not the software meets the requirements or specifications or design. Some testing is non-functional, testing how a system works rather than its specific functionality. For example, are the libraries used legally licensed for how we're going to use them? Acceptance testing involves end users giving feedback as to the usability of the software and whether or not it meets their expectations. Performance and load testing put software under stress to see how efficient it performs or how well it holds up to high demand. Integration testing is used to determine how well major pieces of a system interact with each other and tries to find any incompatibilities. Regression testing is used to see if updates or bug fixes to a piece of software cause new problems with tests that originally passed. Each type of testing is used for various purposes and to address different issues. Further, each type can be applied to various levels of a system. However, we'll focus on a lower level functional testing method called unit testing. Unit testing involves testing a single unit of code. In general, a unit is the smallest testable piece of code. There's no set definition on what a unit actually is, but it could include a module, a submodule, or an individual library. More commonly though, a unit is a smaller piece of code, such as a class or a single header or a source file, or an individual function, which is what we'll focus on. A unit test can involve several test cases, which are collectively referred to as a test suite. A test case is simply an input-output pair that is known to be correct as determined by some other method other than our software. A test case gives us an input that we can feed into our unit of code and an output that we can compare our function's output to. If the outputs are the same or sufficiently similar, then we say that our unit of code passes the test case. Otherwise, we say that it fails the test case. Here's a diagram of our previous description. The test case is an input-output pair, and to re-emphasize, we need this test case to be verified by some other method other than our code. If we used our code to produce this output, it would always trivially pass, and we wouldn't be testing anything. We can create the test case by hand or using some other tool. The input is fed into our unit of code. Then the output of our unit of code is compared to the test case output. If they're equal, then the unit test passes. Otherwise, it fails. If it fails, then we go back to the drawing board and fix our code until it passes all the test cases. Before we demonstrate some concrete examples, let's discuss why testing is important. The reason that we engage in software testing is to provide some assurance of quality. Testing provides a reasonably high confidence that our software is correct. Correct meaning that it conforms to our specifications or expectations. However, no amount of testing can ever provide a guarantee that our software is correct. Testing only gives us assurances for what we actually test, not what we don't test or cannot test. Also, it's still possible to have bugs or errors in our tests themselves, giving us either a false positive or false negative about the correctness of our software. Still, testing can prevent or at least reduce the chance of costly bugs that would manifest themselves in production mitigating our risk and cost. Also, if we follow good testing practices, it can help inform and improve our design of the code. For example, unit testing forces us to have well-defined units, which in turn forces us to have well-designed functions. Given the importance of testing, we should strive for several goals when we design our tests. First, we should strive for good code coverage, meaning that our tests should be comprehensive enough that most, if not every single line of code is covered by one or more of our test cases. For example, if our unit of code has a conditional statement with two branches, then we should have at least two tests, if not more, one for each possible branch. This means that we should design and test as many types of input as we can. We should also test edge cases or extreme input values and corner cases, which tests what happens when units of code are fed values outside of normal operating procedures. That is, we should test our code's error handling. This is related to a testing method known as fuzzing. 
in which you provide invalid or random data to a program to see how well it handles errors in recovery. In general, we should try to be adversarial against our code. We should try to break it. We shouldn't just test what we would expect to work, but instead be as comprehensive as possible. Testing is not without cost. Indeed, writing test cases often ends up with more code than the actual project itself. The time and resources required to develop good test suites is often just as much if not more than the time to develop the code itself. Take, for example, SQLite. It's a widely used open source database library. The code itself is only 128,000 lines of code, or K locks. However, its test suite has 91,000 K locks, which is 711 times larger than the library itself. Another example is the International Space Station whose software has 1.8 million lines of code, but its simulation and testing code has a combined 14 million lines of code. This added cost is often worth it, as it reduces technical debt and costly bugs. That is, testing is an investment, which has an upfront cost, but which pays dividends later on. Let's demonstrate basic unit testing in three different ways, each more sophisticated than the last. We'll write unit tests for one of our distance library functions from before. First, we'll do some ad hoc testing, which is probably what you've been doing up to this point. Though ad hoc testing has its uses, it does not provide a repeatable test suite and requires a lot of manual work. So what we'll do then is automate this process by developing an automated test suite. Finally, we'll introduce a more formal unit testing framework for C called CMACA. Recall our get error distance function that we've been developing over several modules. We've already tested this in an ad hoc way, but let's go ahead and do it again. Here I've got a distance driver program that reads in four values from the command line, computes the error distance, and outputs it. Let's go ahead and build this and then use it to test several values. Let's test it over half the distance of the globe at the equator. That is latitude longitude 0, 0 to 0 degrees north and 180 degrees west. We would expect this to be about 20,000 kilometers. And there's no error code. Let's test from the equator to the North Pole. This should be about half of the value that we just computed about 10,000 kilometers. Now let's test from Memorial Stadium to Wrigley Field. About 764 kilometers seems right. Let's test some edge cases. Here we should get a distance of zero since both locations are the same. Let's test a corner case that is an erroneous input. Here we actually get an error code of two because 95 degrees north is out of bounds of our expectations of our program. Now that was a lot of manual work and it's not repeatable. One drawback to ad hoc testing is that if we ever make a change, we're gonna to have to come back and do all those tests all over again. Instead, let's automate that. Here's another program. First, let me declare some variables. Now let's write some code to test some of those values from before. Remember that the value was about 20,015 kilometers. So let's check to see if the value that's output by our function is equal to that. So if our get error distance function does not compute the correct distance, then we output that it failed. Otherwise, we output that it passed. Let's quickly do another one.
Now let's actually run this. There is no input because they're hard-coded within the test suite program itself. Both of the test cases failed, but that's only because our precision wasn't exactly what we were expecting. It's common to build in a tolerance in your unit tests. Here I've already got a function is close. The returns true if the two values have an absolute value that is within one one millionth of each other. Let's go ahead and use that instead of strict equality. I'll also add more precision for my calculator. And now they both pass. We might also add some more convenient reporting. For example, let's keep track of the number of test cases passed and the number failed. And report a total at the end. And now we can add some more test cases. We can also add test cases to test edge cases and corner cases. Here my condition is different. I should be looking at the error code instead. And all my test cases pass. Even though our automated testing is an improvement, we still have a lot of copy pasta of boilerplate code to determine if the output was correct, to count up the number of test cases passed or failed, and to output a report to the user. An even better solution is to use a library, or in this case, a formal unit testing framework to take care of all of that for you. There are a lot of unit testing frameworks to choose from. For this demonstration, I'll be using CMACA a forked project of another unit testing framework, CMockery, created by Google. I won't be walking you through the particulars of this framework, as it's not really the point of this lecture. Instead, I just want to expose you to a more formal testing framework. Here's an example that I've already written. It has several functions that we'll be looking at in a moment. But first, let's take a look at the main. The primary way that we use this testing framework is by setting up a bunch of unit tests. There are several ways to do this, but in this case, I've used two functions. In the first three examples, I've passed in a function for CMACA to use as a unit test. That function will test some piece of functionality and determines if the unit test passes or fails. The second function takes two arguments, the function to test, but also a piece of data, or in this case, five values that will be used in the function. I've set it up so that these five values correspond to four input values and an expected output value. For example, from latitude longitude zero degrees north, zero degrees west, to 25 degrees north and 20 degrees east is 3,514.686 kilometers. These are values that were determined by other means, in this case, my calculator. There are three sets of data, 
that we pass in, each one as an independent unit test. Finally, we run the entire test suite. Now let's take a look at the actual unit test functions. Test out of bound tests, well, out of bound values. Each one of these tests passes in a value that's invalid, either an invalid latitude or an invalid longitude, and examines the return value. We use a cmocha function, assert int equal, to check whether or not the return value is equal to two. We actually test eight different values in this single unit test. If any one of them were to fail, then the entire unit test fails. We could split this up into a finer grain test if we really wanted to. Test value 001 is an example of hard coding several test values. In this case, 00 and 2020 as latitude longitude pairs. We then call our function and assert that it should be roughly equal to 3,112 kilometers. This value was computed again using my calculator. However, we don't want to fail a test because of precision or floating point error issues. For that reason, I've created the same function is close that returns true if the two values are within one one millionth of a kilometer. Using this approach, if we wanted to test a lot of different values, we would have to create a function for each one. Test value 001, test value 002, etc., etc. The final example function solves this problem, however. It expects that we pass in an array of five test values, the first four corresponding to two latitude-longitude pairs that we pass into our get air distance function, and a fifth value that is the expected output. Again, we assert that the output value must be close enough to the expected output value or the test fails. Using this approach means that we only have to have one function, and we simply need to pass in a different set of values for each unit test. Let's run this to see this in action. As you can see, some of the boilerplate stuff is taken care of for us. It would be easy to incorporate this into a larger build and deployment script so that we could rerun all of our tests automatically for every build or any time that somebody checked in some code to our repository. This approach is known as continuous integration or continuous deployment. In practice, it's usually best to adopt and use tools like CMocha rather than creating your own testing framework.